I really I think this is going to be fun to talk about. Uh, so much so that I had it in front of me and now I don't. It was about the quarterback injury situation. And there's a lot of quarterbacks, folks, that have injuries in the league at the minute. But which one is the most, I guess, telling or or, or, or the most sort of, um, like, the biggest issue for a team? Is it Jimmy Garoppolo or is it Lamar Jackson? Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo is out for the season for broken foot. Lamar Jackson, at the time of recording, very likely to not play at least this week against Pittsburgh. Um, I'll start off here, Mark, if you don't mind, and just, just put my two cents in here. I would say I, I think the whole Jimmy Garoppolo situation is the bigger deal for, for San Francisco because you can see Lamar getting a two- or three-week break and Huntley will move the chains for, for the Ravens. I just, I just feel that I think it's a big ask. Now, you, you could see the Niners winning the NFC West and going probably to the NFC Championship game, but will somebody like Brock Purdy, and maybe he'll have this transformational effort and he'll beat the Bucks this weekend, but does somebody like Brock Purdy bring or keep the Niners at that level? People would argue that Jimmy Garoppolo was heavily reliant on his defense, but also Christian McCaffrey and Debo and George Kittle. So maybe it's not so much of an issue. I, I do feel that it's a bigger issue than, than Lamar Jackson. And I I think the Ravens, if Lamar does not play this weekend, I think I think the Ravens will lose against the Steelers, which is crazy to think. But um, What's your thoughts, Mark? I'm glad you said... Um, that the 49ers because we can make this into a first take or a Shannon versus <laughs> whatever that program is called um, I, I think it's Lamar and I'll tell you you mentioned it there the defense is good enough for the 49ers that I think they can keep them in games um, I mean look at what we pre- we talked about there the other day with Tampa Bay with its defense being able to keep it in games when there's no offense going uh, they do have obviously Christian McCaffrey they, they look. They, I'm not going to start naming names. You know who's on the offense. Um, the Christian McCaffrey point I was going to mention. We, we we don't know as as we recorded this if Baker has been has been picked up on waivers, so we don't know what it's going to go. But that doesn't make a difference to my thought process. I'm going a quarter a quarterbackless San Francisco is better off than the Baltimore Ravens without Lamar because I think they're really? absolute. I think they're unwatchable, Michael, without Lamar because if you look like he hasn't been the most accurate uh, passer. He hasn't had to throw for the most amount of yards. It's that he's doing with his feet. He himself has 750 yards on the ground, which is almost as much as the next three rushers on Baltimore combined. And when you think that they are a run first team, like that's crazy. They obviously are missing the Rashad Batemans. Um, Mark Adams is getting back into the fray now, but I just... They've been so poor. Like I, I, I wonder is it an indictment on John Harbaugh then to say that John Harbaugh without a quarterback can't coach around it, whereas Kyle Shannon can. But I don't think it's so much that. I kind of wonder is it on um Eric DaCosta, the GM, that he hasn't put enough players on the field because uh, Ozzie Newsome would have been his teams were almost defense first and he, he you know, kind of in the mold of what San Francisco is that they would have been able to survive. But since uh, Ozzie Newsom is gone. I don't think that Eric DeCosta has done, made the best decisions. Even Wink Martindale being let go as the defensive coordinator. Look what he's doing with the New York Giants now. When it comes to um, Lamar himself, he was in a contract year as well. I think that it kind of messes up his future. He was playing for that. And you're saying that like he might be week to week. That could just be for game planning and stuff to put that into teams heads as they go down because you're going to have to play Tyler Huntley is the quarterback now he's had a stint with the Cardinals he had a stint with the Seahawks he wasn't too great for either team I'm surprised that he was still bouncing around but I'm kind of like I don't think they have games to surrender not with the way the AFC is yet we just talked about the Las Vegas Raiders whether they can come back into the playoffs is kind of hinging on being able to capitalize off maybe the Jets or maybe the Ravens dropping out of it Look, it is a tough ask. They, if the, the, the Ravens have so many units, but I think the Cincinnati Bengals have taken over the AFC North, so the Ravens are going to be in that wildcard race now, and I just think it's going to be very difficult without Lamar, who everything goes through him. The whole offense is planned around him. They're already down guys. That yeah, I'm just I'm so sure that I do not want to watch the Lamar, uh, the Lamar Jackson less Ravens. It's funny, Michaela, because Tyler Huntley has 
I wouldn't say a plethora of weapons around it, but when you can rush the ball with Drake and Gus Edwards, and you can also rush it with De- Devin Duvernay, and they've been doing that in, in some small situations over the last few weeks. We've got Mark Andrews and Marcus Robinson as well, Isaiah Likely. He has got some sort of weapons there. Now, he played seven games last year, and there was not many touchdowns scored, both passing and rushing from Huntley. But one thing he does have is he has the athletic speed, the dynamic sort of likeness to what Lamar can do. But it goes into that whole conjure question of, what do you want? Do you want somebody that can just get the ball down the field in terms of throwing it, or do you want a dynamic runner? And I guess that's a big question. And then obviously the whole situation in San Fran with um, with Jimmy G, with Brock Purdy, is it's going to be intriguing to see what happens in the next few weeks and uh, the, just the next few weeks of the season. So what's your thoughts if we compare both? Well, I kind of agree with both of you in a sense that I agree with Michael and think that the 49ers are worse off without Jimmy G. And I agree with Mark in the sense of that you don't want to watch the Ravens if Lamar Jackson's out there. But the biggest takeaway from me is that Jimmy, I, I forget this nearly every year, how good the 49ers are. I have to stop like underrating them. <laughs> Jimmy G and the 49ers, they went to the NFC Championship last season and lost to the Rams. The year before that, they were in the Super Bowl. And then, so... Jimmy G is obviously very important to that success of the 49ers in the playoffs. And then I look at Lamar Jackson and I'm kind of like, they can't even get to the AFC championship game. They're supposed, he he was an MVP a couple of years ago. Like he, he should be getting that Ravens team to that game. And you look at their last kind of playoff run. They didn't get to the playoffs last year and they've only made the wild card and the divisional rounds with Lamar Jackson. So it like, they probably won't make it past the wildcard round if he's out for the the rest of the season or for a few weeks. But even if they do make it to the wild card, it looks like the most they'll ever not well not ever, but the most they'll go with Lamar is the divisional round where the 49ers can make it to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. So I think that the the forty ers defense will keep them in it. But and I wonder if if Mayfield goes to the 49ers, will Shanahan and him click and will he, will he be able to kind of get a spark back? But I definitely think the 49ers are worse off without Jimmy G. Mark, can I just, uh, well, I agree with what Michaela said there about Jimmy G. And before you give your, I think you're giving us a clarification uh, about I, Huntley. I put my hand um, up. When I, was, when I was talking there about um, Tyler Huntley, I had Brett Huntley in my head, who I said played for the Cardinals and the Seahawks. And I was like, wait, that's I was not wondering, right. I was going to say, God, did he? I was going to say, geez, he's, he's, <laughs> you, Huntley. No, because you were like, ah, oh, he wasn't like, I was like, oh, God, he was all right last year in Baltimore. I was going to say, <laughs> give you a break. <laughs> Who's this clown over here, right? It, it, talk about being on a first take kind of show. You have to come up with opinions. I mean, no <laughs> <laughs> here, um, I agree. 100% McKinnon what you're saying about the Niners and Jimmy G but I will say that Jimmy Garoppolo lo- lovely lad lovely looking lad to be fair to him as well but uh, he had five and a half minutes to win his team a Super Bowl and he completely bricked the bread to, to brick the bread two years ago that's, that's not even a term uh, I'm, I am going to for him though because you, 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 if you look at what happened with Trey Lance and then obviously Jimmy gets another shot and the team's done well and it just sucks for him but uh, look t- time will tell over the next few weeks and months how, how Brock Purdy does <laughs> How long, like every season we seem to be like, Carl Shanahan, when he gets one quarterback for a whole season, what's it going to look like? I, I, look, the stats going to come up on the Instagram or the Facebook page of the or the Twitter page of the next few days because I'm going to have to look into it because it seems like he's had awful tough luck because right in the press was always, it's, oh, Carl Shanahan's after losing his quarterback. We'll have to wait until next year to see what he could have done. And the one thing I will say, because I know we're, barping on about the Niners here is John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan had to get Trey Lance they had to get up and get him they made such a fuss to get him and they had to get him so I'm saying nothing 